They genuinely believe that all conservatives are evil. That's why they have taken to calling us Nazis, white supremacists, and fascists. They want to paint the situation as so bad that violence is the only alternative. Hi everyone, hope you're all well. So, uh, Sunday was the one year anniversary of the deadly Charlottesville riots. So to give you a quick recap of that event, on August 12th last year, a group of actual white supremacists, so not just ordinary conservatives who are smeared as being white supremacists, decided to organize what they called a Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, Virginia, in order to protest the proposed removal of a Confederate statue. Now, for the record, I think that Nazis and white supremacists are the absolute scum of the earth. They are vile, reprehensible people. They are right up there with communists. They are so despicable. And I resent the fact that they decide to align themselves with the right because the center-right at large wholeheartedly rejects them. We want absolutely nothing to do with them. Also, the Democrats actually gave birth to white supremacists, but, you know, whatever. Anyway, back to the rally. So regardless of how we all feel about white supremacists, this was ultimately meant to be a peaceful protest. And it was, that is, until Antifa showed up and they came with the intent of making trouble. As it is, because of them, the event descended into violence which tragically led to one Antifa woman, Heather Heyer, losing her life when a Unite the Right person drove a car into a crowd. It was all around a despicable event. But here is the problem. While it was horrendous that Heather Heyer died, the fact of the matter remains that the event only descended into violence when Antifa decided to appear. Since the white supremacists weren't intending on causing any violence, there was no need for counter-protesters to intervene. The event would have happened without a hassle and the neo-Nazis would have vanished into obscurity where they belong if people had just ignored them. That is how you deal with fringe lunatics, you ignore them and generally they disappear. I don't even think this would have made the international news cycle as prolifically as it did if the professional violent virtue signalers that are Antifa hadn't turned up determined to make a scene. So when Heather Heyer died, rather than take responsibility for the fact that, you know, they had actually brought this upon her, Antifa made her a martyr and used her death for political gain. Then of course the media took it and ran with it and made out like there was this violent uprising of white supremacists in America who were killing innocent people, which is just not the case. So ironically, it was actually Antifa and the left-wing media who inflamed racial tensions in America last year not an uprising of white supremacism. But, of course, people never learn. Given the stupidity and attention whoring of left-wing protesters, plus the faux bravado of white supremacists, of course each group had to have an anniversary event. The Unite the Right organizers put together another rally in Washington, D.C. on Sunday. They expected hundreds of people to turn up, however, only about 40 showed. Seriously, this right here was the entirety of the white supremacist crowd. They were vastly, vastly outnumbered by left-wing protesters, about 100 to 1 according to some reports, thousands of which gathered in the streets to protest them, including, of course, the Antifa contingent. Now, this disparity in numbers is to be expected because there are many, many more left-wing extremists than white supremacists in America which is ironic given the fact the left claims to be fighting against what they call existing power. Anyway, with pretty much no white nationalists to pick on, you'd think that Antifa would just pack up and call it a day, right? Wrong. 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 That is it's wrong. And he did the wrong thing. Wrong. That is absolute wrong. Proof. Instead of fighting fascists, Antifa decided to fight not just the police, which are the next best target, I suppose, but also the press. Don't be shoving on people. What's wrong with you? Yeah, and get that out of my face. Hey, 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 not to mention screaming the usual anti-police, faux revolutionary chants. All kinds of racists! New metal faces! 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 All kinds of racists! That is what...
what Antifa does. It's all about the search and destroy, gratuitous violence for the sake of violence. As Buck Sexton of Hill TV tweeted in summary, given the realities of what really occurred today in DC, a few dozen white nationalist losers surrounded by thousands of protesters all chanting, all cops are racist and Antifa throwing things at them. Media is going to move on from this whole thing very, very fast. Meanwhile, in Charlottesville, very few, if any, Unite the Right people turned up. Nevertheless, Antifa and their left-wing comrades decided to have an event anyway. Interestingly enough, on Saturday, the day before the protest, uh, police seized weapons such as razor blades and brass knuckles from people entering the city of Charlottesville via checkpoints on the city fringe. Now, since there were no white supremacists there to speak of, we can probably safely assume who those weapons belonged to. Anyway, with uh, no fascists there to attack, you'd think that maybe the left-wing protesters could have just had a nice, peaceful memorial for Heather Heyer with some flowers and some kumbaya, which, to be fair, is what the event started out as. However, that was never going to be enough for Antifa, who eventually decided to have a go at the police, because while last year apparently the police didn't do enough to protect people's safety, this year the police were Nazis for doing too much. There was a huge police presence there, and they were all dressed in riot gear because, you know, Antifa's reputation precedes them. Now this made the lefties angry, because how dare the police prepare properly to do their job and prevent Antifa from their anti-fascistness. After all, violence isn't violence when the left does it, right? <laughs> And that, right there, is the problem with Antifa. Well, there are actually many, many problems with Antifa, but this is what's at its core. They claim to be an anti-fascist organization, so allegedly against hatefulness and thuggery, yet they go to these events which are intended to be peaceful and would be largely ignored if they were just left alone with the intent of causing a ruckus and therefore engaging in hatefulness and thuggery, thus drawing attention to the thing that they allegedly want to destroy. They go in as a highly organized group, wearing masks and combat gear, bearing weapons like bats, bricks, rocks, pepper spray, sticks, spikes, fireworks, brass knuckles, razor blades, that kind of stuff, with the sole purpose of disturbing the peace and creating violence. And this would be, you know, halfway understandable if they were just attacking true fascists, but they call every single damn person who disagrees with them a fascist. Among those on Antifa's list of fascists are conservative and libertarian university students who just want to listen to speakers with alternative viewpoints on campus, like, for instance, Miley Yiannopoulos. Who could forget the events at Berkeley in February last year at one of Milo's lectures when 150 black-clad Antifa thugs stormed the already existing protest which was peaceful of about 1500, broke police barriers, used the barriers to smash windows, threw firecrackers at the building, eventually set fire to the place and caused $100,000 worth of property damage. When questioned on her motive by Tucker Carlson, Antifa chief Yvette Falaka was happy to justify the violence. So a fascist is someone who's organizing a mass movement that's attacking women, immigrants, black people, other minority groups in a movement of genocide. That's what a fascist is. Okay. And Milo Yiannopoulos is a fascist. To what extent would you go to stop that person from spreading genocidal propaganda? Would I would you... call for people to counter protest, to stand okay. up, and to shut down any but what do you mean by shut down? To recruit and organize. Like what if, what if... A similar thing happened last year on Milo's Australian speaking tour when in Melbourne, which is the left wing capital of Australia, Aussie Antifa made a scene outside the venue where Milo was talking with the sole intent of shutting him down. To quote myself, Well, it's just appalling, but it's not surprising. It, it is this, I've, and I've, we've said it before, it is this cultural sickness within the left in the fact that they are so certain that they are correct about 
everything, that they are justified in doing and saying anything they want, no matter how violent. Now, the extraordinary thing about this is that when Antifa actually receives pushback, so if conservatives decide to, you know, defend themselves in the face of violence, or if the police step in and forcibly stop their operations, Antifa plays the victim. And what's even more extraordinary is that the press gives them a guilt-free pass, as if nobody is allowed to oppose them. That is how certain these idiots, their supporters, and the left-wing press are that Antifa is truly working for the good of civilization. They genuinely believe that all conservatives are evil. That's why they have taken to calling us Nazis, white supremacists, and fascists. They want to paint the situation as so bad that violence is the only alternative and that we deserve any and all violence that may befall us. Now, I am sure that some people get swept up into this organization because they are intellectually subpar and therefore easily influenced by people talking about these conspiracy theories. But then there are others, like, say, hypothetically Yvette Falaka, who are genuinely bad people and who have found an outlet for their inherently violent nature but can justify it to themselves as working for the greater good. And considering that the real Nazis, the Jihadis, the Maoists, the Soviets, and every other authoritarian violent regime in human history has done the exact same thing should be of grave concern. Thanks for watching everyone. Now if you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, leave me a comment, and if you really liked it, then why don't you pledge at my Patreon? The link is in the video description.